G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome to the Simpson Desert Weapon Bike Build Episode 7. Uh, in this one, what we're going to be doing is the tool tube. We've already done the tool, tool tube, but it failed, so we've got to redo it. Now, before we get into that, uh, last week, episode six, we did the uh, auxiliary lights, and I did a full rewire of that stuff. Touch on a few points. right? Righto. Right, so some people had a concern about the length of this uh, here and the vibration. You see that they do vibrate. Now I run exactly the same thing, although granted mine are just a little bit shorter, but I still have that, I have that vibration. Never causes me an issue when I'm out there. And the amount of times that um, you are actually running these floodlights, they're not, well, the way that I run my uh, auxiliary lights, floodlights, whatever the hell you want to bloody call them, um, it's, it's when you're in the never-never um, or you're on dirt roads at night time, which aren't very, especially here in Australia, you avoid trying to ride your bikes at dusk or dawn or in the nighttime kangaroos. They're, they're just buggers. Um, so... And when you are at night time stuck having to ride at night time, the small amount of that bullshit going on, and like I said, mine's on there and has been on there for many, many years. Mine aren't steady lights. Mine are the cheap Chinese ones that you get from eBay. They are still running to this day. No problems from vibrations and wires and blah, blah, blah. So I don't think that's an issue. Um, wanting them as high as possible, practically, um, someone said in the com or I think a few people mentioned in the comments was another bonus to having that up instead of all the way down is that when you had the shadows, the dips, the cliffs, the coming over bits and pieces, the higher your lights, the more you lessen those shadows, which gives you better vision. So there you go. Right now, the other thing was the, the wire. So the overkill on the size of the wire Nobody touched on one thing. Let's have a look. Right, so p people were saying that the original wire that I replaced, because I thought that this small, tiny little wire um, was not going to have enough, uh, would be too small for the current to run the cigarette lighter and also the spotlights and then also running a compressor off, off it. But... People said, no, Mark, it, it, this wire would have been fine to do that, carry that, carry the, carry the bloody current. Um, and like I, I did, so we went overboard. Something that I didn't mention and nobody else mentioned was that, let me bring you down to the, right, so existing wire, you know, very, very thin. Obviously, it was put into this um, duvalaki, which would help protect it, but... Here's the new wire, very thick. Each one of these are coated, and then you've got this extra coating over here. But the biggest thing that I wanna make a point of is see the wire thickness of that wire there and that wire there. Which one of these wires do you think is going to, if crimped like that, or constantly doing that or, or, or whatever, which one of these wires do you think is going to hold up? So that's another consideration, guys. Not just what the amperage can go through. It's will this tiny little wire hold up? I'd put me money on the big one. And look, for one metre of this, it was $4.50 for a metre. To do this job, you only need two metres of, of this. Why not go that bigger bit of wire well knowing that it's never gonna you know, break as opposed to that tiny little flimsy thing. For all the guys that do the commenting down there and saying about the amperages and the, it would be okay, that's all great, love that shit. That's how we all learn, you know, sounding bored, making bloody decisions, whatever. Right, so let's get stuck into this bloody tool tube. Right, hey guys, so I've already made a start on this. This is the old one that we made up. They are identical 
sizes. We haven't, so Chappie's just turned up and said, this is the new one, He's, he made that up. That is the problem, we've seen, seen that before. The back, this was too close to the back wheel and the back, when he, on the suspension dropping down, it would hit on the tire and that's what happened. So we've somehow got to have this same size, but bring it away from that wheel. It's quite a tight bloody, uh, a tight, it's a tight fit. I'm going to show you that in a minute. <coughs> We've got same two bloody uh, things that we're going to use to hold it. I've got some cop, found some copper pipe to space this out a little bit more than what it was. And then for the rear, I've got some, well, Chappie dropped off, you know, this kind of bloody stuff you get at Bunnings hardware stores. I've uh, cut one up. I'm going to use double and I'll show you how that is going to work on the back. Hopefully this is going to work out. I don't know whether I'm going to get a chance to paint it because the weather's so bloody cold here. You might have to run with a white one. We'll see how we go. Right, first things first. So here's our tool tube. We want to sit it in here. Perfect little spot. It goes back to about there where it hits that battery buddy case thing. We've got two points to mount on. This is the old helmet, um, the helmet lock, Duvalaki. And then we've got this point here. We can't, so we can't do, that's gonna be a bit of a trick to do that. And I think that would be an ugly and it'd be a sharp, you know, it's just, it's a shitty spot to do it there. This was originally mounted on that one there. But if you have the way, this bracket has to go over that, and if this bracket goes over there, you end up with that, and you can't, it just, it's a shit. You want that, not on here, you want it there where this will close up nice, um, like that. So, we're gonna run on that bolt there. The bolt that Chappie was using actually goes into there and is working perfectly. So that's gonna go there. This one here, I can't remember how we had it, I think we had it at the back. I'll show you. As you can see, this is one solid thing. So we can either mount it there or mount it in between there, in between there or at the back here. That's our options, either there, there, or over here. Right, so I've got a piece of ply board. You can see that like that. I'm trying to be a bit technical. What I'm doing is running this against the tire and then feeding that up. Now you can see, I oh know you can't see actually, hang on, let me go over that way like that. So you can see how that muffler, there's plenty of space um, in there, so that wheel will not hit that. So that's how I'm figuring that out to get that straightness. So when we go on the other side over here, uh, whoop. I tell you what, it's a bloody close. Oh, sorry guys. As you can see, it's a bloody close fit. And then when you add in, if I put you guys down and close, oh, grab this thing. See how that just there to get in. Can you see that? Yeah. So this is uh, is a hindrance. So that's going to push that out. And then when you're here, you can see that we're, we're hitting it. So we've got to get this to come out. But the back part, so we know that that, that, that end edge there is very close to this wheel. When we put that on there, hopefully you can see that we're protruding uh, past that just. So that's, that's the issue on the DRZ400 running this size tube as opposed to like the DR650, no bloody worries, but it's, yeah, it's a bigger bike. So that's what we're trying to remedy and not have that wheel hit the side of this. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is put in the one that we know had the issue. Uh, how would have it, it would have sat. It's hard being on the other side of the bike. So yeah, it sat like that somehow. So it doesn't actually start, uh, it hits here, right up to there, but that's the main hit back there. So this 
um, end here protruding out that little bit. I don't think it's going to cause us a problem. I'm going to get that as far out as I can. Might have to push on that uh, back plastic a little bit just to hold that as far back out. And then having this kick out as much as we can, I think we're going to get away with it and that should work. Sorry guys, I didn't have my bloody sound going and I've just done this bit and I've done that bit. So I've just whacked this on. So I've got uh, the bolt washer, washer on the other side of this copper pipe there. And then this bar, this thing here is actually threaded. So when I put this on, this is just dry fitted at the moment, I'll put Loctite on there. That should hold that, no worries. I'll bring you around and we'll have a look at the backside. Okay, so as I was just explaining before, so we've got this here. Obviously that's no good. Even if it was just in there, it's just on a dicky angle and you're just, you're mucking around. So obviously the best angle is there. That's how we want it. I've got this, I found this bolt that I've got and it's got that little square thing. So that works brilliantly to go in the back of that. So that can go against that there. Um, but when you do this up or undo it, you, it it's self-locking there. So that's where these two things come in. I'm just using two for extra strength. I should be able to run a spacer of some description there. And then, oh, if I bloody use two hands, I'll drill a hole for that to fit through there. And then that will go in through there. And I think that will do the job. And then all we've got to do is check, which we're going to do now. I may have to push that by bending the, the, the I can do that to bend those brackets to push that away. But we'll have a look at that now. You might jiggle a bit there, guys, because I'm running in between this tripod. So I'm running this board up against the tyre, and I'm looking at it. Oh, hang on. I don't think you can quite see that, can you? There you go. So that's actually not at hitting at the back, which is brilliant. I don't... Hang on. Have I got that straight? No, we're still sweet. Look at that. So then if I move... Oops, sorry. If I move this forward... Hang on, there, that's got to get it, got to get it bloody straight. So we're right just on it. So we're going to have to move that um, at the, yeah, let's just do that. So all we've got to do is grab this and bend it away like that. See what that gives us. So hopefully you guys can see that. That, I reckon, is a winner. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is um, make, get that bolt and that bolt there, drill the holes on the bracket to suit, and then uh, we'll dry fit that as well and see how that goes. Come back to you. Right, eh? so that's a six mil. And then the other one, we need an eight mil. Beautiful. Right, hey, let's see if our bolts fit through. So for the luggage rack, the B&B thing, that's no worries. And then our little bracket on the thing, boom, done. Okay, guys, so we'll put this big bloody uh, oh, hula back through. Like so, hopefully, oh, we're we gonna have, oh, hopefully, Oh, I wonder now whether I'm going to have enough room to bite. If I put that on there. Yeah, all right. I wonder if I can get a clamp on that. I'd really like to run two of these. Or I might have to loosen the other side so that this will come across better. That might be the better option. Right, so loosening the other side's giving me a bit more play. So if I get these on here, that'll now enable me to get that to bite on. Brilliant. The nut's still on the other side, so that's sweet. What I'm going to do though, I'm going to put some uh, Loctite on this. They're serrated. Oh, put it that way so you guys can see. They just seemed a bit bloody loose. So I'm going to do the same to the other side. Come on. There we go. That'll do the trick, eh? Get our nut on there. Bring 
that around. Got a quick tighten up. So I can still move that, brilliant. Now, so as the, sp the spacer guys, that's a uh, 10 mil socket that, uh, it, it, I don't know. Uh, I don't know whether we used that last time, but the, this was on here. So I don't know whether Chappie's just whacked that on there or not. But we're gonna use it because it seems to work. So that's gonna lock in there. Put our spacer in. And what we're gonna do green. Possibly. Oh, Mark, what are you doing? Maybe I'll loosen that off a little bit, give us a bit more wiggle room. Okay, so the trick was to put this one on first, then do that one. So I'm just gonna. Lock tights on there. I'm gonna redo this one back up. So that's got still got plenty of uh, bite on that. Gee, sorry, Chappie. Oh bloody! Hopefully that's yeah, that's all right. I thought I munted your bloody uh, yeah that thing on you, but it's not. It's all right. It's all good. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's on tight. We've got the Loctite on it. I'll do up this other side. Sorry guys, there's some Loctite on there, chappy. On the other side. You've got to remember to have your sound going. You've got to remember to press record. Oh my Lord. Right, we'll tighten that up. Right, so we've got to tighten. Now, someone tells me do not use the part where you've got, oh, hang on, let me get that out. Don't tighten it with this one. Use that just to hold it and then tighten it with this side. Is the deal and you'll um, not strip your bolt heads with that Allen thing. Right, eh? So on this one, whoop, where are you? This one here, we've got a nylock nut, so that's all good. Just gotta tighten him up. I reckon that'll do it. So hopefully now, we might have to, oh no, we're gonna have to, that's gonna have to come out more. Like that, brilliant, love it. Cool. So now the question is, hang on, can you see? Oh no, you can't see. Sorry guys, so I've just, I've pulled that um, out. So we've got that side out. So the only question now is um, these brackets, because I've bent them out, if there's weight in here, will it naturally want to come back? I don't know. So that's just something that um, Chappie's going to keep an eye, have to keep an eye on. And there's an easy visual when you're walking around the, you know, around your bike or you get off, if you start to, Chappie, if you start to see a gap here, this sh should be right on that. You should be sweet. So if you find that there's a gap, do that. Righto, now let's put this board, I'm sorry, I'm holding you in one hand and the board in the other. Uh, so hopefully you can see that. That, I'm trying to make sure I keep this, because you can tr easily trick yourself, guys, holding this bloody board on that wheel. But yeah, there you go, I think that's showing it. So we are good to go. Brilliant. Well, there you go, guys. That is this episode done and dusted. I don't have the cap, because he didn't bloody supply the cap. I don't know what he did there. That's easy, put a cap on there. It'll be a simple bloody thing. I don't think the white actually looks too bad, you know. Put a little sticker on there or something. I reckon that might, we'll see what bloody chappy comes up with. There's lots of options, paint it, uh, carbon fiber it, as in the fake contact bloody type bullshit um, that you can do. 
Well, hopefully that'll hold up. So the, um, I was just thinking, so we, we wanted to run the hoses, the breather hoses, ho hoses, so that when he does river crossings and whatever, you know, it doesn't stall halfway through. For the Simpson ride, there's not going to be any of that. It's out in the desert. He's not going to be doing any river crossings of that particular size. So I don't think we're going to worry about that. We'll do that later. Um, but I was just thinking, shit, we've got to do the kickstand pad. That little thing is not going to cut it in the sand. So we need to put a bigger pad. Um, I'll have to talk to Chappie because I reckon we'll just weld a extra bigger piece on there. I don't think he's going to worry about doing an aftermarket or anything like that. Um, yeah. Well, there you go, guys. That is uh, episode seven done and dusted. That is, hang on, I want to do a, uh, I, I need to do a thumbnail for the bloody uh, thing. I'm going to smile and point to, to this. There you go. That's my thumbnail <laughs> for this video. Um, so that's it. Done. He'll get the lid. We've already said that. Um, so in episode eight, hopefully I'll get that lamb's wool seat cover that he's got. I'll customize it to suit this seat and the kickstand pad, get that welded on there, get something made up. It's Friday, he's picking it up on the weekend. I don't know if it's Saturday or Sunday, so I'm, I'm running out of time. Obviously guys, you know, it's, this isn't the only thing that I'm doing <laughs> around here, so I have limited time to get shit done. But there you go. Righto, see you in the next one. Remember, keep on riding, and if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.